Do you ever open your closet and think, why did I buy that? I definitely have a lot, but not since shopping with Quint. I see fewer misses and a lot more hits that I'll be wearing season after season. Quince has all the seasonal must-haves, like 100% European linen shirts from 30 bucks, performance polos, and versatile activewear. The best part of all, Quince items are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. By partnering directly with top factories, Quince cuts out the cost of all the middlemen and passes the savings on to us. And Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices, along with premium fabric and finishes. I really like that. I just got two shirts. I ordered a third. It's coming in a week. I got two shirts. I just got them a couple days ago. The quality is unmatchable. I love them. They feel great. They fit great. That's why you gotta shop at Quince. Fill your closet with timeless pieces that you'll be wearing for summers to come with Quince. Go to Quince.com forward slash Bubba for free shipping on your order and a 365 day return policy. That's Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com forward slash Bubba to get free shipping on your order and again the 365 day return policy quince.com forward slash bubba he wants more money and more my time he's got anxiety he's got depression he takes pills so he doesn't lose his his mind he's just a fuck boy welcome to clem kush Starring Seth Kushner and myself, Bubba Clem. Uh, when, how long has it been now? Your first stint with me. Do you? Are you good with dates? I'm not good with dates. Yeah. Are you good with dates? Yes. Okay. So <clears throat> when was it? When I think it was like maybe November. Because you came in right before the Bubba one. I'm sorry, right before Barp. The first. I think your first time you were here. It was right before Barp. Yeah, it was uh, January 2020. Oh, shit. So, like, literally weeks before Barb. Yeah, or maybe I started in December, yeah. But, yeah, it was right December, January, right around there. All right, 2020. Yes. And then how long did it last before you fizzled out? I left in, I believe, February of 2021. So a year. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I definitely went a year. You did? Yes. And when was this next, this late, well, the current one? I started in January again. Wow. So what is this? <clears throat> November's bad for you, employment. Because usually by the time for me to get to you, it takes a while, a little bit. Although this time we pretty much, I called you and I said, hey, fuck boy, you want to work? And you're like, yeah. I just had to figure out what I could I could leave my other job. That was the hold up right, this time. We were time. talking for a while while you were still with uh, iHeart. Yeah. And I was trying and to figure out my life because I was doing, I was working at the coffee shop. I was doing social media. I think I had another job in there that I was doing. And uh, so I think that this job has, an, has enabled you to not have to work at the co- coffee shop anymore. That is absolutely 1000% correct. And I think that in itself is cool. I that think, has mean, made a tremendous, uh, uh, a tremendous improvement in my life, quality uh, of life. Too. Not have quality. I mean, quality of life. Not having to be there. Uh, I, I, I had. Were you a guy that literally had to whip up a mocha latte for fucking you know, Rhonda from Carrollwood? You know, Bubba. I actually didn't. I didn't hate it. Uh, you know, when you would kind of make small talk with customers or people were nice, like sometimes people are annoying as fuck and they don't right. tip and you know all this other shit. Um, and but I mean, like I, I had a good time when I was there. Like I was on my feet the whole time. Like I was, you know, what I've considered it like working out almost, or I was getting some cardio and all that. But I mean, when I started having nineteen year old girls fucking yelling at me about shit, I instead was instead like, of hitting on you. Well, what, I mean, instead of hitting on you, what? Now hold on, I'm as safe as they come. I so, understand yeah. that, but what I'm saying is, and no, this is no disrespect to Phoebe, so I don't want her to think that I'm trying to be disrespectful yeah but you know if that 19 year old that was bitching at you instead if she was like hey buddy you know uh you uh you married you gotta you know you gotta go and of course you'd be like yes i'm married and you know i'm not available but that's that's on opposite ends of the spectrum spectrum than bitching at you, right? Yeah. And what if you had these nineteen year olds rolling game on you? That'd be cool, wouldn't it? Well, yeah. I mean, that would be uh, that would. When's be... When's the last time you had a bitch roll game on you? <laughs> I've never. Bubba. Oh, no, it's come on, I'm Bubba, Seth, Bubba, Seth. I'm not you're a fucking. I mean, you don't. You you're you're really good on the radio. Thank you're you. really funny. And that doesn't <clears throat> translate to. I mean, we don't have a we don't have a, a large women audience here. You uh, know, we don't. Fe- you know what? Odd, oddly enough, I know we have women that listen. More, more. If we go just straight terrestrial, 
we only do we only I don't know I don't know what the woman ratio is, but like if you take all of our platforms, we're about fifteen percent women, up about up about seven or eight percent. Right. Lately. Which, again, so you look at 50% of women and then you go, okay, what 15% of those think that I'm intriguing? What percent of those think that I'm hot? What percentage of those people would want to actually get with me? The number gets very small. And then you look at my career and go, okay, I was at a sports station. There are no women that are listening to that. A lot lot of girls were into my hockey podcast, but they were also very, very young. Right. You know, well, not like 12, but yeah, they were like 16, 18, and I'm still younger and all that shit. Um, and then Where did I, you get to most groupy ass? And I, again, I mean, it was in the probably 97X. Yeah, I mean, how much, because when you were a boy? Yeah, I mean, I didn't get, a, I mean, I've only been with, a, I've only been with like four chicks, but I mean, like, I'd, I'd make out, like, you know, I mean, there were things, you know, I... Like when they call the station and like, you could get Fisher to take a couple breaks and you could get some head? <laughs> What Never, do you mean? No, that's how I. That's how I bro. I mean, that's how I roll. No, no, there was no getting. He- there was no. Was getting anybody head. in Cox getting head? No, not that I know of. But 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 when I was at ninety seven X back then, like we were the only cool station. Like there was, a, it was all old stations. Remember the Eagle? Yeah, I Magic. Mean, so um, one hundred one. Well, what was one hundred one five before it was top forty? It was eighties. One hundred one. The point. Oh yeah, the, which I thought it did pretty good then. Uh, the point was great. Uh, whenever Jared from Subway would come into town, because he used to be the spokesperson for the Heart Walk, uh, and he would always come on our show. He would always talk about how uh, the point was his favorite station. Well, of course it was. Well, I don't know what that translates as far as liking boys, but uh, Jared so, from Subway so loved the point. Do you did you ever get any um, groupy pussy? Um, now again, this is all I'd say one PP, time PP prior. To Phoebe, she knows. I, she was it, my friend then, so she knew about the. She knew about it. I mean, like, about so, every so she girl. Was, so she was your friend, so you could be like, "Hey, friend Phoebe." She's like, "What?" And you're like, "Hey, man, some girl called on the 97X hotline, and she asked for, no. uh, and she asked for Alien uh, Ant Farm. I took her <laughs> off the line, and she, I'm going to get some head." No, no. I mean, the one time that I, I, you think I'm very, I think I'm a sexual. I might be a. Oh, you're Devin. You're Diddy. I yeah. mean, yeah, you're gonna. You're just one step. No, no, don't call me Diddy. Well, I mean, if Bubba, I don't. If you, I don't drug women. Well, we don't know if it's it's true right now, but you know, <laughs> no, I've never drugged a woman in my. You know what? I've drugged one woman in my life, and I saved her. Meaning, like the only time I've ever had anything sketch like that, and, and, I, and I've talked about it on 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 it before. And Doctor Diaco was involved too. He helped me, but I was at Bubba. I was at Planet Bubba in Spring Hill. Okay, and <clears throat> there was this girl. She was hot. I mean, hot. And she said, we had two VIP rooms. We had a VIP room for like the public, and then I had my own VIP room. Which was under lock and key, like you could not get in. That's where the sucking happened. So, so I meet her there, you know, pour a bunch of fucking drinks down. Now, do you remember when you could go to literally GNC and buy a thing stuff called Renutrient? No, and it was it was legal GHB. It was called Renutrient. Jeez, Bubba. No, honest to God, it was it was. I believe you. It I was legal. Didn't. It was legal GHB, and and I didn't really. I mean, I I took a little bit, but it would fuck me up. It's good to fuck on. It's really good to fuck on. Okay. So <clears throat> we're coming home, and it was like uh, it, it was a plastic bottle, and then it had like a the top of it was what you poured the shot of GHB in. Now it absolutely tasted like fucking battery acid, but it was legal. You could literally go to GNC and buy it. I used to go to this place called the Vitamin Center on Fourth Street and buy it. A guy named Ryan. Owned it. I know what you're talking. I know that place. <laughs> yeah, so I would, a guy named Ryan owned the Vitamin Center, and so I'd have him on my show, you know, talking about, you know, renew, just all the, you know, stuff. Just supple- so you could get your free fuck medicine, right? <laughs> oh, and he'd give me like two, like, and it was like a hundred bucks a bottle. Jeez. And it was for bodybuilders, like before or after, like, I think it was like maybe after they work out like really fucking hard and they take it and it helps their, it, it helps their muscles do some shit. Well, it was, it was really, it was, it was GHB. And so we're, we're at Spring Hill, Planet Bubba, and she was so fucking hot. I mean, like, way hot. And I'm giving her free drinks, of course. I got my own bar in my VIP room. Of course. And, and we're double locked down. There's two doors, and they're both dead bolted. All right, Matt Lauer. Right. Matt Lauer. Jeez. Bubba Lauer. Never forgot about that fucking pervert. I mean, yeah, boy. Geez. Talk about a guy that completely got fucking disappeared, right? Yeah, well, I mean, I think he had enough I mean, I'm money. Make, I'm making a comeback. I mean, yeah. I, got Matt, I mean, I'm making a comeback, but I, 
I, I, I, you haven't allowed yourself. I, but if I had thirty-six million dollars, like he did, you'd be I, chill, right? Yeah, I'd be like, "Fuck going back." I'd be reading books of the park and I'd fucking be, all day. I just, yeah, exactly. I, you, because if you got thirty-six million, you can find chicks to fuck you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You're fine. You don't need your wife that you cheated on. No. So, so, uh, I, uh, she starts sucking me off. Oh, okay. and, and she, she's, she's giving me head, and I'm like, now you understand? I'm in spring. I got my Mercedes. I, I, I'm in I'm in Spring Hill now. From where I lived, best case scenario, if you caught all this is before the veterans, if you caught all the lights on 19 appropriately and were mildly speeding, you could get to my house in about an hour. So <clears throat> you have to kind of keep all that in as you're trying to get some pussy. You were taking her all the way back to your house. Yeah, I wanted to fuck the shit out of her, and I wanted to wake up in the morning and fuck her. Okay. That's thought out, <clears throat> which you know is very rare for me. You know, I did. I didn't know. I don't know your your fucking. Yeah, I don't, uh, I don't yeah. like. I don't, I I am all about like, let's fuck and then maybe fuck again, and yeah. then then you need to grab your cleats and get to stepping. A fucking duck. A double fucking duck. A double fucking <laughs> yeah. duck. So she's slamming. She loves this GHB, and I think like the recommended dosage would be like two shots for a. 200 pound man and she's like a buck 10 and she's like oh man i'm fucked up this shit's so good and i'm like yeah it's good keep sucking my dick and i'm driving and i'm driving home in my in my mercedes i got like ten thousand dollars cash on me because that saturday nights were the night that me and fabrizi cut up the cash you know what i'm saying yeah yeah so i got like 8500 or Ten grand of cash, like a fucking straight rock star in the back seat in a duffel bag, <clears throat> and she's sucking my dick from the time we pulled out on Enterprise Boulevard in Spring Hill till the time we pulled into my house. She's got my dick and balls in her mouth wow. the, enti- the entire time. That's a that's a that's a lot. That's to a, the point where like <clears throat> you know like a lot hard days work. <clears throat> well, like to the point where like. All around my flying shit's drenched. All right, Bubba, this is really what? like I don't. I mean, I'm telling you, this, this is really this is getting Clement graphic. Kush. This is Clement Cush. I know, but I don't know where what this. What the fuck? How I'm going to tell here? you where it's going. How did you get? She passed out like I was Bill Cosby, and I didn't fuck her. <laughs> I saved her. You That's saved her. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I don't want to hear about your fucking. I want to tell you. Cock pants. Okay. You, okay. <laughs> okay. So my cock pants are just all slobbered up. <laughs> we pull in. About the time we pull in, she gets out of the car and she's like, "Oh my god, I'm really woozy. Oh my god, I'm like, I'm, I'm, I, I don't feel good." And then you're like, you and know, you're like, like, yeah, fuck yeah. yeah. Thank God I had your, my, thank God I had my dick in your mouth, or I wouldn't be getting nothing right now. <laughs> If I didn't have your my if I didn't have my balls all slobbed up uh, on you, okay. I mean, I wouldn't be getting nothing. Right. So, I'm like, well, come on in. <clears throat> so we go in and we go right to the bedroom, and I feel as if I need to take a shower. And she said she thinks she needs to take a shower too. So she, ta- I, I take a shower and I leave the water running, and I'm gonna go jump in bed, just with like a towel on. And I figured she would be quickly following me. You know, take a shower or, you know, wash your pussy. Sure. You know, <clears throat> you know whatever. Just because yeah. you've been. Wash the club out, off well, yourself. Yeah, wash the club off. Exactly. So she, I'm waiting and waiting and waiting. And my dick's now soft as shit. <clears throat> like, you know, my dick ain't. I mean, you know, your dick can't wait but about five minutes. Yeah, yeah. Then you got to start jacking it yourself a little bit, uh, playing it around, taking it around the fizz. And then you accidentally jizz. No, I don't. I don't. No, that happened I, to me I, once. I just can't jizz on a jacking. So, well, I mean, I can't. Us, look, I, can ja- I can, I can, jack off and jizz. All right, you know, I didn't mean to scroll you from your story, but <laughs> like, sorry. <laughs> but it, I mean, it, it takes a lot for me to jack off and jizz. All right, yeah, that's where that's Diddy. That's the Diddy, where Diddy comes yeah. in. It took a lot for so, Diddy to come. So I'm waiting and I'm waiting in the shower. I'm thinking there's no way the bitch has even got any fucking hot water by now. She's been in there 20 minutes. I was in there seven prior. I don't I don't think I got 27 minutes of hot water. So so I go in there. I can remember I can remember like her name was Jennifer. I go Jennifer Jen. Jen, are you okay? She's literally slumped down in the shower. Oh my god. The water is now running over the back of her head. Cascading. And she's she, <clears throat> cascading. She got these nice tits 
and this little furry pussy on her. Fur- I don't think I should be. I don't and, think I should be the only one here. Hearing and, this. and she, well, there's not. There's going to be probably four or five thousand motherfuckers that download load this thing in itself. Furry pussy, Bubba. I mean, so uh, so I turn the water off, and she's like, uh, then all of a sudden, she pukes everywhere. Well, I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of glad because it's in the shower. I mean, puke in the shower. Puke anywhere you want. If the second best place to puke outside of the toilet is the shower, right? Well, I mean, I think outside your house in the bushes, but that's just me. Well, I understand. Yeah, I'm an I outside. Mean, I'm an outdoors, I don't think man. she's on Zoloft or anything. Yeah. But anyway, so <laughs> you know, I don't. So I don't think outside the bushes are a parameter. But like under normal people's uh, throwing uh, up, know, yeah. So she, she throws up in the shower like multiple times and like deep you know you know how you have kind of like a little throw up but then you have those those really deep guttural throw ups she has a couple of these really deep those kind of throw ups oh, the kind of throw up with a guy like me that's fucked as much pussy as i have knows it's over i have you cannot salvage this piece of pussy this pussy I thought is. You were just trying to salvage her as a human being. I didn't well, know you were well, trying to salvage the, well, the pussy. Start, well, hold on. I started out with trying to salvage the pussy, right. and it went south quickly <laughs> to to uh, you know personal health. So she she pukes twice, and she's like, "I'm so sick, and I I feel like I'm gonna pass out. Oh my god, I don't feel good." So I'm like, "What?" The? So I get her up. I wash the puke off of her. I dry her. I then like I, she can barely stand up. I had I can remember I had these handrails in my in my in my in my shower. I said, hold on to this handrail. I went to the I had a big king size bed. I went and put towels down where she was gonna lay. In case she threw <clears> up again. Yeah, well, just for all types of different purposes. Right. So in case you got on top of her. Yeah. I mean you don't want cum sheets. Yeah. I always lay a towel. I mean, don't you lay a towel down when you fuck? No. See, I, I always lay a towel down. I just I change sheets a lot. I change sheets every Sunday, oh, but yeah. but I put a towel down when I'm fucking. Do multiple sheet changes a week. Yeah, well, we change every Sunday. All right, well, that sounds like a really fun <laughs> fucking couple's experiment. Thanks, no problem. Do you let her? I mean, I hate fucking putting a sheet on. Oh, I we we for the most part, I make her do it. Yeah, yeah. It's it's it's. I can't get the <laughs> fucking just, corners, man. I can't. I can't. She's good at it. I'm not. I know. If he was like, you don't know how to put a fucking sheet on. I'm like, look, it's fucking tough, Fe- man. Fitted sheets suck my dick. They all suck, man. Yeah. I don't know. First, I, you got to put the mattress pad on. Then you got to put that, which that fits around the fucking mattress. Then you got to put the fitted sheet on. And, and, and then you're you jumping gotta, across the fucking bed. Yeah, and then, and then the you got to put. Then, this is the way I do. Like a lot of people do beds differently. I do a fitted. I do a, a mattress pad, then a fitted sheet, then a a sheet, and then my blankets. Right. That, that's how I do it. And I think that's how most people do it. Yeah. I have a sheet between me and my blankets, and I have a fitted sheet, and and on, under the fitted sheet is a mattress pad. So anyway. And and I and I always have I have two sets of them so that like you know if she if if Merch Crick was to squirt today during a, a big high spot oh my god <clears throat> we could get we we got new sheets I don't know why I'm having a hard time with all the sexual stuff today I think it's I just don't know. me because you know why yeah because you need some pussy nah it's just, I got some shit going on I feel like you're Larry David and I'm Leon oh man you need some pussy I got to see the new one <clears throat> I I'm watching it today Phoebe didn't fucking want to watch it yesterday I was oh, fucking I'm watching pissed. I'm so fucking watching it today I almost went solo well. That's our show. That in suits. I, I jacked off to Meghan Markle yesterday, yesterday. Oh, that is wonderful, God, man. She's so fucking hot. I guess so. So anyway, I get Jennifer to stand up, and I go get, I lay she, I lay, lay these like beach blankets down on her side of the bed. So she sits, she lays down on the bed, and she says, oh, my God, I think I'm going to pass out. Well, I don't think passing out in my world, and, and this, listen, I can tell you exactly what year this is. This is 1997. This is 1997. This is while I'm living in, I literally lived over by Steak and Lube in that little, in that, over off of 49th Street and 118th in Pinellas Park. While I was bigging, building my big mansion, it took two years to build my big mansion. So for two years, I lived in this little three bedroom house. Uh, you know, over off of 49th and 118th. Yeah, I like it over there. I was in ninth grade going to Ben Hill Middle School. Right over there. And so um, I, she's like, um, 
Said she was going to pass I'm out. Gonna, I'm going to pass out. And I'm like, well, you know, passing out ain't, you know, okay, that ain't such a bad thing. I mean, I'm not going to fuck her. I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I, I can't fuck a passed out chick. Like, I can't. No. I no, just no, can't. That's, I think it's illegal. I, I think it might be illegal. And I, and not only that, but I couldn't get a bone on it. Like, I mean, I need, I need interaction. I need dirty talk. I need an outfit. I had a girl. <laughs> you I, know, I need a girl asking me to choke her out. I, had I, mean, I need an alpha. I need an alpha out. <laughs> I had a. Uh, I had a, a girl pass out on me uh, when we were making out, and it, it just takes the bone to zero. Well, no, I didn't know. For, I didn't know for. <laughs> I didn't know for a minute that she had. She had passed out. Um, you were making out, and she passed. We were out? making out, and then I was like, I was like going to like, I was like rubbing her, you know, like downstairs, and all of a sudden, then I looked because like normally she would knock my hand away, and then I looked, and I was like. She was like passed out. I was like, "Oh boy, better stop this immediately." So, um, yeah, I was just uh, I took her, I took her home. We were in Lutz. I took her back to my house to try to make sure she was okay. And then I had Phoebe meet me at my house, who was just my friend then, to help me get this girl upstairs to make sure she was all right. Great story. Really? Yeah. There was no fucking. So Phoebe's Fe- helped. Yeah, she was just my friend back then. But I was like, "Oh my god!" I was like, "I made out," and then she, she, this girl passed out on me, and I got, I got to make sure she's okay. So yeah, so I took care of her. I didn't wow. get nothing else happened the next morning, though. I'm texting uh, the merch crick about these fucking sunglasses. Oh, what's We happening? need to order ASAP. Our first um, cash cube appearance. Is it an April 20th? Is that the one the concert is? is? April 20th. <clears throat> yeah. We'll get these quickly, Bubba. Yeah, They'll hopefully. be here in no time. Hopefully. So... She's passed out. And so now I'm like, Jennifer, are you okay? Are you Jennifer, are you okay? Wake up. Like, wake up. And she's like And I'm and like I'm and like she goes from snoring to barely breathing. Now people have died on GHB overdoses. And so I knew that Renutrient, and she had done like four or five, she had did she consumed more than like the standard recommended dosage for a 200 pound man double. So what, 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 you know, you're supposed to do like two shots, even for a chick, two shots would get you really fucked up, but really horny and want to fuck four shots could kill you. Her, not me. Yeah. It sounds like she had about 200 milligrams worth of edibles. <clears throat> yeah. So she then goes from snoring. When you're snoring, you can you're still alive. You know, you know you're still alive. Yes. But when you go, when you when you when you when you go, hello. Yeah, like there's nothing there. Like she's not making any more sound. Well, I mean, people. So I put, <laughs> so I put my I put my fingers below her nose, and there's not a lot of air going out. I take her pulse. Her pulse is like. Are you sure you weren't sizing her up for a fucking? Kush, I'll tell you the most kinkiest shit I've ever done, and one of them's not fucking a passed out girl. Okay. I mean, you know, for real. Well, like, I mean, I, you know, when she was snoring, she's still, you know, still alive. No, not really. I mean, <laughs> like, I need a girl. I need. Fe- I, know, I, need I, know. Fe- I need feedback. I know. I need, you told I need, me. I know. You need. I, I need. Know. I need instant feedback. I, know. I need. You, fuck me there harder. You know, fucking choke me out. You need a replay. Fucking, you, you know, a role play rape scene is what you, you know, need. Fucking fill my pussy up. Oh my <clears throat> lord. Come, you know, fucking. Yeah, hey, I got you. I got you. Know, you. Fill me up. Yeah, I'm. I'm cream understand. pie me. I, choke me out. Duly noted. Fuck me <laughs> harder. <clears throat> and I got. What happened to this bitch, Bubba? So I I <laughs> call Dan up because I think she's dying. Like I can't get a pulse on her. She's obviously alive. <laughs> But I can't like you know I'm trying to like you know do my do the rest and I can't fucking figure it out you right know? like I mean so I just put my I put my fingers underneath her nose and she, you know, there's a little like, like I mean she might her breaths might be down to like twenty five a minute <clears throat> you know I think the average person's heart rate's like what what sixty a minute I something know, I like had that fucking no idea well, I think she's down to like twenty five all right so I call Dan it's three in the morning now it's three in the morning I call Dan I go Dan. I was like, what? What's going on? I go, I'm with this chick, and she did like four or five shots of Renutrient on the way home when she was sucking my dick, and then she, I took her in the shower. He goes, where's she at right now? I go, she's at my house. He goes, okay. I go, she, I said, she went to the shower, passed out, fell down in the shower, didn't hurt herself, 
she didn't kind of fall down. She just kind of slumped over. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't like a bag of potatoes fall down. It was just kind of like a slow. You know how the Wicked Witch kind of melted into the ground? Yeah. And that's what it, she I'm, just of, ima- I'm just imagining 30-year-old Dan to like coming over there. Just, <laughs> no, yeah. He, well, he didn't come over, but he's like, oh. listen. He, he's like, listen, do you have any regular sugar, just like table sugar? Like the kind of sugar that your grandpa mixes into his coffee? You know, sugar. Granular sugar. And I go, yeah, I think I got, I mean, like, I think we all probably have some sugar. If you've cooked, if you've cooked, and and so I think I had some sugar. He goes, and if you don't have any sugar, go to the convenience store and buy three cans of Coca-Cola and try to get her to drink it because Coca-Cola, out of all the soft drinks at the time, I don't know if Mountain Dew has more now or what, but Coca Cola had like oh pound for pound of <clears> sugar, like forty eight grams of sh- of pure fucking sugar. So he goes, get table, get granular sugar <clears throat> if you can, and if you can't get granular sugar while you're at the con- now literally, you know the area I'm at. There's a convenience store right up there on 49th somewhere. He said, go to the convenience store. Leaving her alone for five minutes is going to be okay. Go to the convenience store, and if they don't have, if you can't buy any granular sugar, buy three Cokes and then go to the coffee section and get sugar packets. You know they have sugar packets? Man, he was all ready to go. He knew what the thing <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dennis, sugar, <laughs> sugar supposed, supposedly, you know, hooks you up from this shit. It, you kick out. You Same with, out. I heard with weed, too, when you start having sugar. Yeah, well, orange juice and, and sugar. For weed. Okay. Like, if you really are having a bad high, like, you know how highs sometimes go from fun to fucking not so fun? Those are the ones the edibles kick in extra <clears throat> yeah. hard, yeah. And it doesn't really give you much. You're like, man, I'm having fun as fuck. Oh, shit. I'm freaking out. Yeah. <laughs> right? I'm, I'm outside. I was outside. I'm outside. I was scared. <laughs> I'm not having fun. And then you're like, I'll give anything for this to go away. Oh, my God. And then you're like, maybe I can sleep it off. But you can't because you're high as fuck. And you go to... And you go to does it tell me if this has ever happened to you? You go to close your eyes, and you when you close your eyes, all you can see is this like psychedelic fucking, sh- uh, like this psychedelic like sex- a kaleidoscope. <laughs> yes, uh, kind yes, of deal. yes. Yeah. All you got is like a seventies kaleidoscope Beatles fucking movie going on in your fucking in your in your on your eyelids. <laughs> it's like your eyelids are movie screens, and you know you like if I'm closing my eyes right now, I just see dark. Right. That's it. But if you're high as fuck, you got your you got all these kaleidoscopes and all this shit happening, and you can't fucking wind it down. So if that ever happens, orange juice and sugar will help you fucking get out of it. You're welcome, so, people. So I go, I go, I go as fat. I got a, at this point. I got a Mercedes S six hundred. I mean, I'm I'm fucking balling, bitch. I'm straight balling. And this thing would go. This thing was fucking fast. I drove. And it's called the Lakes, a little, little community. I was going 120 on 35 to get to the fucking gas station to get my three cans of Coke and my, and my 42 packs of sugar. I came running in there, grabbed the Cokes, grabbed the sugar, and it was some, you know, woman. She's like, man, you're in a hurry. I like, I'm in a really big hurry. I really, really, I mean, she's like, uh, like, I think, I think. She probably had someone to go drug. I mean, you're getting a bunch of Coke and sugar. I I literally, I think it might have been, the total bill might have been three bucks. And I gave her a 20 and said, fucking keep the check. Like, I didn't have time. I didn't have time for her to count me out to $16.34 fucking cents. I understand. You had a sleeping woman at, at your dying, house. Dying. Dying. Oh, dying. Sorry. On GHB. And, and brought back to fucking life with so, Coke. So, so I drive home, and she's, I'm, te- I'm and I'm, 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 I'm I, I, Dan said, call me when you get back to the house. There Come wasn't on. texting back then, was there? No, there was just straight calling. Yeah. So I call. He goes, now put your fingers underneath her nose. Can you feel breath? And I'm like, yes, but it's very faint. He goes, it's very important for you to literally prop her up. Like she Now, at this point, she's laying flat on the bed. Just Didn't flat. you want him to come over at this point? Well, no. This, he was only going to do what I was going to do. Okay. I mean, he wasn't going to fucking take the Pulp Fiction uh, needle and stick it in her heart. <laughs> I mean, he wasn't going to Pulp Fiction her fucking heart. That's the that's <laughs> the toughest scene to watch in any Oh, my movie. God, isn't it? Yeah, it's hard, yeah. And you know you're a fucking degenerate when they got a Pulp Fiction you back to life. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't know if that happens a lot. But no, it yeah. does. It really does. 
they 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 see the adrenaline, right? They shoot straight adrenaline into your heart. So I go and I have to like now I have to position her so that she's kind of uh, against the headboard because you can't pour coke down a girl's mouth when she's like sitting on the side, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I have to kind of position her so that she's leaning up on the headboard, but she won't stay. You know, she flops either side, so I have to kind of <coughs> hold her up, and I get the big, pa- I get the packet of sugar, and I try to uh, just, just tear it off and and and, and j- you know jam it down her throat. Well, she's not having it. It's tough. It's like a dog it's, trying it's, to give them medicine. It's, it's tough. It very much like giving that pill that your dog you have to hide in peanut butter before but then I fucking dogs I've had they'll fucking separate the peanut butter from the pill and leave the pill on the ground no, and they're eat not the peanut fucking butter. stupid they're yeah. not they're not they go figure it out or give me some more peanut butter asshole yeah so I'm literally trying to make her now have you ever tried to make an unconscious person drink no drinking is you know you have to actually there's a certain amount of suction that comes through your lips and then you have to you know quench it down with your throat it's a, it's an it's an action so i uh i i just i keep just literally trying to get coke in her mouth coca-cola while taking sugar packets and sticking it in her mouth and you know, just like i went through like five or six sugar packets and two cans of coke now you have to you have to account for a lot of spillage. There was a lot of spillage because you know she's like, ah, ah. but you had the squirt squirt towels down. But as soon as I started jamming her body with all this sugar, she started to kick out. Like she started to kind of like, kind of, kind of, ah. like the Undertaker. She fucking popped up. <laughs> right, she popped up on the on, on, on the referee gave her the passion, drive, and patience. The formula of winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything for you to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED lights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has it covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every Every time or your money back because with ebay motors you're burning rubber not cash with all the parts you need at the prices that you want it's easy to make your car the mvp it needs to be and bring home huge wins keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com again ebaymotors.com eligible items only exclusions apply Two and a half, <laughs> and right before the third hit, she fucking popped up like the Undertaker. And that gives you a fucking throat slash. <laughs> so yeah, exactly. And then she walked the high rope and went and gave me the tombstone. So she, I like the sugar is getting in her body, and it's kind of like bringing her back. She's like, like I, I went from having zero communication with her. To her now going like, I don't feel good, which is way more than I had a half an hour ago. Did you say, bitch, I just saved your life. I'm like, listen, Jennifer. And give me $3 you, for these you, Cokes. You, 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 I need to go back to the store and get my 1635 cash. <laughs> Fuck it. Are you okay? Can you make another 10 minutes? Because I got 1635 credit at the Circle K. Oh, man. I, so I, so I finally, I finally kind of get her... To where you shove her in a taxi and get her to send, send no, her home? No, Dan's like, listen, you've got to stay up all night long, <laughs> oh my and God. and and just make sure that she and stimulate her, like you know, grab her arm, shake her, talk to her, you know, constant <clears throat> constantly be stimulating or trying to have communications with her. So it was little. I'm not kidding you. From two thirty or three o'clock in the morning. Until 10 o'clock in the morning, I sat by her side. Shaking that bitch? Just shaking her. She's like, what are you shaking? I just want to go to sleep. Well, the sugar was getting it because now she could say things like that. Did you feel like maybe like telling her to show you a titty so you could whack it? Or no, you still needed something fuck. more? My, my boner was so hidden. Uh, yeah. He was scared. I understand. My boner was thinking he was going. 49th Street is also where the jail you is, too. You thought you were going to jail? I thought I was going to go a little bit uh, uh, north on 49th to fucking, you know, Dave. Uh, I think it was, I think the guy's name was right back in the day, uh, Rice or uh, Jim Coates. Jim Coates oh, was. Oh, yeah, the, Coates. Yeah. I thought I was going to the Coates Hotel. Um, did she did she fall out from you giving her too much GHB or from the hour suck fest on the way home? Which well, did, I'm which, sure the hour suck fest, you know, probably took dehydrated her. 
Yeah. Because my entire fucking crotch was, you know, looked like I'd been, you know, somebody hit me with a water balloon. Oh, boy. And so finally at 10 o'clock, she kind of like wakes up and she's like, what happened? And I'm like, oh, fuck. Thank God you're okay. She's like, what do you mean okay? Last I remember is we were at the club and we were messing around and then we were driving and that's the last I can remember. I'm like, Jen, you don't understand. I took you in the shower. You puked two times. You fell out. And uh, Did she give it up to you then? No, we never. I never fucking called her ever again. What a whore. Well, I'm she- glad you saved her life, Bubba, with Coca-Cola. Mm. Now you guys know what to do if you poison your to find her on face. I need to find her on Facebook, see if I can get her maybe a back in the day suck or oh, something. I mean, I don't know. If, I don't think I don't know if she owes you a suck at all. Um yeah. you might just want to call that one a loss, Bubba. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's hard to take an, a loss. I don't know about the statutes of limitations and stuff like that for the hour long suck fest. That might bring up some trauma in her, you know? Yeah. Hey, can I ask you a question? Yes, go ahead. And then, do you have any gory details of your sex life? Uh do you want to talk about the uh, possible tweakage of uh of this show? Uh, yes. Uh, after you're texting? Or, yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah, we got no, we just, uh, we'll yeah, just, I mean, it's, it's a podcast. It's long, yeah, it's, it's long form Willie. It's, it's long form Willie, yeah, but you know, people mm. want to hear, they, I think they want to hear shit. Sure, right. Um, <clears throat> so, here's the deal. I have an opportunity, well, why don't you explain what we potentially might oh, have well, going on? Oh, well, I or mean. Do you, want, do, you, do you want me to? Well, I mean, it's a, I think it's a big deal, Bubba. So I think it's better if it comes from you and kind of what your plan is. And then, I mean, we could talk about how I was very selfless when it came to, to you know, expanding this podcast. That's the angle I want you to work. Mm, okay. You still trying to find this chick? I mean, she's probably married by now. No, I'm talking to the merch crick about getting these motherfucking sunglasses here in time. <clears throat> so anyway, um, Britt Hatley... Um, has been, God, he's been away from Howard and out of New York for like, what, maybe three, four years? Yeah. Something like that? Yeah, I believe so. And he's dabbled around and done some stuff, and I think he just got his, and I don't think I'm talking out of turn. I don't think, I don't think I'm saying anything that he didn't want, but he just got his, he went to, he went to, uh, he did a year and a half worth of, of online computer college kind of deal, and he got like some kind of computer... IT security. He can find fuckers now. Well, yeah, yeah. Like he just got he he got some kind of like like and he and when he finds the right job, I, I think he'll be making like you know seventy to eighty grand. I think he was so tired of of people sending him you know negative shit on the internet for yeah, his whole career so that he decided fucking, yeah. he decided that he would figure <laughs> out how to find these motherfuckers yeah. quickly. So anyway, like an IT security specialist or something like that. Meanwhile, Caitlin. She's continued to do her stuff. She's in porn and, you know, like they, like she fucks black guys and like she just, she's, you know, she's crazy. She's hot. Oh and, yeah. No. And, is, is Brent so he, doing any on film fucking? No, 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 no. I don't, I don't, I don't think Brent's doing any of that. Okay. I, I think he's there, but I don't think, again, I probably shouldn't answer for Brent, but I don't, I don't think so. Okay. But. Um, he did say he'd give me a password last time I talked to him. No, he did. Yeah, well, <clears> yeah, you're always it. looking for that password. Well, I mean, who isn't? So, I've been I've been paying Brent a very little amount to work on this special project that's now almost complete. And uh, you know, I, I I'm come I've come to a crossroads with Brent where if I'm going to continue to pay him a little bit, I need him to do something besides what he's been doing because that's we're, we're done with that. So one of the things was I discussed with him last week would be com- coming on the show. On, like, listen, I think I think we got this show filled up nicely. Monday and Tuesdays, we got Dan and Jay. And well, first of all, you're here every day. And I know at first you fought that, but don't you feel that it's really, really? Sometimes you participate more than others, but don't you think it's kind of a necessary evil to have you in here? I oh think it, man, I think it gives the show a different feel. Oh, and, I agree. I agree. Different feel. Um, I mean, would I agree that I should be in here? Probably, yeah, but I don't know if a lot of people feel the same way. But I'm, I don't I, give a fuck what they feel. No, I know, but I appreciate you putting it's my me show. On. It's my show, and I know the feeling that I have when you are in here and can potentially contribute in a funny way. Yeah, or set me up, or cut me down, or have something funny. I can <laughs> do it all. Right, you're a radio guy, and you bounce. And and listen, I I, I think we 
ra- I think we radio well together. I think we have a pretty good dynamic. Absolutely. And uh, so I, you know, uh, I think a couple weeks ago, I told Seth, hey, I want to get you more involved. Um, I want you to be more active on podcasting, which he's doing. I want you to be on the show every day, which he's been doing. <clears throat> I want you to be part of the 530 meetings, which he has been. Going live on Instagram. Um, I just want him doing more. And he's like, okay, I will. Doing tweets. And he kind of taught me the Twitter game a little bit. <laughs> I'm doing a lot, Bubba. I like it, though. And so. 199s. So I'm talking to Seth, and I'm like, hey, listen. Monday and Tuesdays we got the we got us you know we got the Dr. Dan J you know lineup. Wednesdays are just us, which I do like that feel sometimes. Thursdays are babyface and then Fridays, you know, Dan and Jay again. Yes. So I'm like Wednesdays are the only day that I have open. What about Hatley? What about bringing Hatley in at 6 in the morning and then holding Hatley over? And then him joining you and I in a podcast. Yes. And then you're like, well, I don't know if we should, you know, <clears throat> if we should. It was hard to figure out because on Wednesdays, Rhett and Lummy do their show. So I was trying to figure out, like, do we have Brent? Does Brent come in to do the show on on you know, Wednesday, and then we have him come back and do a podcast. No, he's going to be a one-timer. Right. Comes in once a week. Right. So what, what I, you know, pitched to you was that. Brent joins this podcast instead of trying to, you know, throw like, you know, on or just try to pair him up with somebody. Brent joins Clem and Cush, Clem Cush Hatley, whatever we want to call it. And we make it a visual. We do it at the podcast table. We put it on YouTube. I'll still put it on the podcasting. And I know that my podcasting is probably going to take a, you know, a hit. A little bit of hit. A little hit. But, but you got, all, you also got a couple things that you're working on that could maybe in lieu of. Yeah, I mean it's fine. Like in the podcasting, if it takes a hit, it's fine. I'm I'm trying to develop as many shows as I can. But I think that if, if it was Clem Cush and Hatley, I think Hatley's a massive, massive fucking deal, and I would love to have it at the podcast table every Wednesday. So that's what I I'm gonna get a hold of Brent today. See if we can start this next Wednesday. Is he really is he gonna really come back on the show once a week? But that's I'm, a big deal, man. I know any 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 and, 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 and I'm working on it. You've talked about it for a while, kind of like even when back when I was coming on the show, you're like, oh, I'm going to bring back Brent and Seth and all these all these other guys, and I didn't really think Brent was a possibility. I thought you were just fucking with people, but... Well, I'll tell you another possibility is that Carlos guy, um, I think it's Carlos. Oh, they got fired from the Monsters? <clears throat> they got fired from the Monsters. Have you have you uh, contacted him yet? No, I have not. I reached out to him. That, when you when you go to contact him, it has like some email thing fill out there. Like, you know, like. You Thank can't... you for contacting uh, Carlos. <laughs> yeah. Put your name and email in there. Oh, no, you don't need any of that. I did. I had to do it. My God, you've already put the word out over the radio that you're into Carlos. He should be. He should find you from there. Here's what I find amazing is that, you know, iHeart, the, the, you know, WTKS 104.1, Carlos, you know, it was Carlos and. I think Angel and Russ, and then they would <clears throat> sprinkle in like Savannah every once in a while. Then you know whatever. But you 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 have for the first time in thirty one years, WTKS one hundred four point one has been around for thirty one years, and for thirty one years you've you know you 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 got your stable of talent and things like that, but you've never had any direct competition, like another FM talker. You know what I'm saying? Another FM good signal radio station that, you know, had a all talk morning show, an all talk afternoon show, an all talk midday show. Like you've never had any competition. So when you finally get that competition, you start laying motherfuckers off. Oh yeah, that's the move. Like no, it's not though. Well, but like it's you not got about you, you talent. It, 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 you got more competition than you've ever had. If you're going to protect your franchise, that you know it, that probably cash flows and sells pretty good advertising. It's your one one of your most coveted franchises. How do you start? Taking players away because you just made sixty thousand dollars by firing that guy. I mean, you're or whatever you know, plus the insurance. Like you're you're making money, you're saving money when you're getting rid of these people, Bubba. The name of the game isn't developing talent. It's not keeping talent together. It's not getting shows syndicated and getting them all across, you know, uh, all across social media and all that shit. It's about 
what are the cheapest options we can get to put out there that could garner sponsorships? And that's that's how radio – that's the template for radio until it goes away. Well, uh, I just find it odd that I'm a very small corporation. And you're adding people. And I'm a, I'm a very – but see, here's the difference. And this, and this is absolutely the only data you need to know. So they're iHeart and they're this – well, they're the largest radio company in the world, right? Right? I mean, yeah, they're, they're the, I, I, yeah I think they're the, so. Yeah, there they are. They're yeah. the largest radio company in the world. And they don't have the YouTube presence, the Twitch presence. Now, they have their whole iHeart platform, their iHeart, you know, podcasting platform. Who the fuck is calling? Who's Whitney Fox? Oh, Woman, maybe is that the chick? I don't know. Maybe. Uh, hello, it's Bubba. Oh, hi, yes. I was looking for Alan Wagner. Yeah, you know, whoever had this phone before me must have been Alan, and I think he was a heavy Democrat because I get all these, you know, Democratic donations. Oh, no. Yeah, and I mean, I'm not, you know, I'm not oh, really. I'm sorry. But but I but listen, see, I don't like. I'm not necessarily not a Democrat. I'm just not, you know. Okay. I'm, I'm just kind of middle of the road. I'm just kind of waiting to see how this all pans out, you know. Of course. Are, are you? Do you say your name is Bubba? Yeah, my name is Bubba. And where do you live, Bubba? I live in Tampa. Where do you live, Whitney? Oh, okay, I live in St. Petersburg, and you, I'm running for Congress here in Pinellas County. No way. You're set, like you're you're yes. like you are running for it. I am running. Whitney Fox running for the U.S. House of Representatives. Well, Should we get on. her on the show? Bubba? Oh, hold on. Are you going against Ana Luna Polina? That's correct. Oh, I'll vote for you all day and give you as much money as you want. I get that bitch out of here. <laughs> All right, that's what I love to hear. Now listen, have you now, now have you ever heard have you ever heard of uh now don't judge me. Don't judge me. You want me to no, ask no, her? No, go ahead. Go ahead. Have you ever heard of Bubba the Love Sponge? Yes, and when you said this is Bubba, I was like, is this Bubba? That's literally the first thing I thought in my head because I grew up, I was born and raised here in Tampa or in Tampa Bay and are you Bubba the Love Sponge? Yeah, this is my cell phone, and I'm actually on the air right now. And I see what I do is a lot of times I just take my like like this, this came up like spam, you know, or something like that. And so like I like to I usually take those calls live on the air and screw with people. But it looks like I don't want to screw I don't want to screw with you. I'd like to actually help you. Now listen, I'm a Pinellas yeah. guy too. And, and here's a, here's a caveat to that. Ana Luna Polina. When she won, she went against a guy named Kevin Hazlett, and Kevin Hazlett right. was a is my attorney, and I have him on the on the shows. Yeah, I have him on my air like once a month, and I'm the one that got him Roger Stone's endorsement. So maybe I could get you Roger Stone's endorsement. Well, listen, I would love to, to chat with you further on ways you'd be willing to help me. That'd be fantastic. Well, you need to come on the show, and we need to let people you know people know. Uh, that Ana Luna Polina, that there is some site that you just can't lie about who you are and say that you're a right. veteran when really you're a dancer at the at the Gypsy Rose or wherever the hell she was, and she's lived this right. complete facade of a life. And maybe it just takes another strong woman to call this bitch out in order for because I don't think Kevin could go as hard in the paint as he needed to go. But woman, see, a woman can right. be a woman can be a little bit more aggressive to a woman than a man can be. Politically, politically. That's exactly how I feel. I think it's going to take a woman to get her out of that seat. Exactly why I'm running. All right. Well, listen. Wait, can I ask a question, Bubba? Because yeah. I'm in Pinellas. I'm a St. Pete yeah, guy. Yeah, this is my co-host, Seth Kushner. Yes, go ahead. I just want to know if there's any, uh, if you have any plans to get rid of the pollen problem that we have in St. Pete, whether, you know, we start paying people to go spray the streets or whatever like that. I think it's becoming a real issue, and I don't see a lot of politicians willing to embrace it. I don't know if the pollen, the pollen problem. It's a hot button issue. It's not a sexy issue for her to be able to take on. No, we just need we need here's what we need. We need a woman like uh, is your name Whitney? 
You got it. Yeah. Okay. Whitney Fox. Whit- Whitney Fox. We need a woman like Whitney Fox that is truly honest about being Whitney yeah. Fox. Her name is Whitney Fox. You can Google her. She doesn't have all this checkered past and all this nonsense as to, you know, like she's she's born from. And by the way, Ana Luna Polina, she didn't even move into her district until after she won. Did you know that? Oh, preach, Bubba. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, I know so much about this race. I'm ready to write you a check, and I'm ready to put you on the air. And if that bitch wants equal time, I'll give her equal time because I will bury her. I'm telling you that right now. Well, I am so glad I accidentally called you. This was perfect. <laughs> all, right, all right. So listen, this is my number. I'll text you when I get off the yeah. air today. Maybe we could meet up for lunch or something one day. And then I have, I, and then, you know, we start, I mean, I guess you've probably, probably just started, started this campaign process. I don't, I don't think you've been doing it a while. We just launched in October. We out fundraised Anna Paulina Luna last quarter, and we have over 20-something local endorsements and members of Congress and PACs and late local labor unions. We are doing quite well in the beginning of this race. Hey, Roger Stone, I know you know who she is. he is. <clears throat> Roger Stone is a very good friend of mine. I'm the one that got him um, uh, Kevin's endorsement. I also got him Grady Judd's endorsement, too. Right. Well, listen, Bubba, listen, text me. Like you said, this is my cell phone, and let's let's talk. Let's set up a coffee or lunch or something. I would love that. Perfect. I'll get her on the show, Wh- Bubba. Whitney Fox for Congress. By the way, you can go to WhitneyFoxForCongress.com. You can get involved. You can contribute right there. I'm asking people that are, that listen to this podcast later today, Lummy. I mean, uh, Seth, that they go to Whitney. It's W-H-I-T-N-E-Y, Whitney Fox for Congress. She's a very attractive woman. And it, it, and she's, you know what? She uses her attractiveness in the right way. She's not like, you know, in a slutty way like Ana Luna Polina. This is a real woman right damn, here. You're damn right. So listen, Whitney, you got, now, Would you? did you ever think that the cold calling some dude named Alan was going to get you? Isn't that no, just crazy? All right. So, so this is very serendipitous. All right. Thank so, you so much. I really look forward to connecting with you. Now, listen, I'm also going to be making a, contra- a, a, a campaign contribution, and I'll get in touch with you, and we'll start having you on the show. And when's the, is the election? The election isn't this November, is it? It is, yes. It is. Oh, well, we got to get her. We got to get her right on out of there. What if I, hey, would you like Kevin's help too? I've considered that. Do you think that would be a good idea to reach out to him? Well, I think it would be. I think it would be a good idea to get his data. I mean, you know, you know, he's got a yes. t- he's got a ton of data from when he ran. And uh, oh, I see. Where is he in Indonesia though? Well, right now, yeah, he's actually. To be honest with you, Kevin's in Vietnam. He's actually in Vietnam vacationing for a month. <laughs> but oh. I need to get you two together because he can probably show you the things he did wrong and the things he did right. Right. But you know what happened? Absolutely. That bitch only won because she got a Donald Trump cold call at the night before the election. Donald Trump did a robo call for her, and that was the difference. Wow. But I don't think that Donald Trump's going to be doing that this time. Mm-hmm. No, it'll be interesting to see and see how that plays out for sure. So listen, no, I'm really excited to connect with you. And if Kevin's open to chatting i would love to meet with him as well i'll get all this put together for you <clears throat> so all right that sounds great oh, oh. I, it's such a great i'm so glad i i called you this worked out perfectly i'm glad i met you and i look forward to working with you thank you bye-bye i appreciate it thank you whitney all right bye you're promising your money already yeah i'll give her 100 bucks oh, okay all right. yeah, you know it's not coming from your bone well you know she actually got it, it's not I, coming from your bone i just pulled up an article she got two hundred thousand dollars in january so she's doing good i mean but look at i mean we need that we need a politician in our pocket bubba <laughs> yes so we can start getting shit done in tampa bay again yeah. and we, if we're not buying and paying for politicians we're just fucking wasting our money on podcast tables and cash cubes we need to be buying off these people listen i'm nuts Sorry. I'm way ahead of you. Did I not put this whole fucking deal together just right now? Well, I thought you had- I don't need a cheerleader telling me what I need to do. I know what I need to do. I'm doing it. I was reinforcing what you need to do. <clears throat> not only did I offer Ross Roger Stone's endorsement, but I'm going to give her Kevin. Kevin's going to give her the roadmap as to what he did wrong and right, and this chick's going to win. She, is she- Whitney a- Fox, and she, I'll tell you right now, have, a- have you seen a picture of her? Yes. Oh, she's yeah. pretty. She's very attractive. She's, is she an R or a D? <clears throat> um... 
I don't know. Well, because I think when you kept saying Roger Stone, she didn't really embrace it. So oh, th- and now are you? A de- is she a Democrat? I don't. I don't know. I mean, if she's going against the, is she going against the Republican? I don't know what's going on. <clears throat> oh, I don't know if she. I, she's that, a Democrat, Bubba. So she, you, it's, she's a Democrat. <laughs> No wonder she can't. I, everybody, that just go back to listen to every time Bubba said Roger Stone, she didn't say one word. Yeah, she's running against the I'm Republican. I'm running for Congress because I believe we're failing American families. And I'm running to attack the affordability crisis, grow the middle class, and protect our fundamental freedoms. Yeah, she's got to be a Democrat because when Alan, the guy who owns my phone... Yeah, all, all I get are straight Democrat people. That, that's how you started the conversation. And then she goes, oh, because you're like, I'm not really that way. And then you're trying. Like, you're, you're right. She's a D. Bubba, you tried to convert her. Yeah, but here's the deal. You, if you're really a smart man, you deal with some R's, you deal with some D's. You know, you got, you got a couple R's on your side. You got a D on your side. You know any D's that could endorse her? I do. I know the most powerful D there is. I'm trying to think. The most powerful D in all of Florida. All of Florida. DeSantis? He stands for dick. Is this a real, is this a, you could really. John get, Morgan. Oh, that's He's, true. Hold on. He has, he, anytime Hillary Clinton comes, comes to his house. They all come to his house, yeah. Obama comes to his house. Yep. Hillary came to his house. You think Joe Biden, Biden made it there? Biden, nah, Biden might have needed a walker. He might have did a zoom in. He might have did a zoom in. He, he might have had a lark to get him up the up the driveway. Dude, honestly, Morgan. If would I pr- get if I get Morgan, if I get her, if I get her Morgan to Morgan, she, I mean, oh, it's over. I mean, and it's, it's two pronged. One, I hate on a Luna Polino. and if Kevin ain't gonna run, then why not put a D in there? I let's get it. Yeah, and now I'm dealing with the D's. I, <laughs> Welcome up, welcome. I mean, I mean, not that I'm a D, but I would they would say welcome I'm a, to you. I, well, I mean, you you can be whatever you want. I can be whatever I want to be. Which I can is, dabble. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Right? You, you know what? Political affiliation, and we are. We don't give a fuck. Look at you know what? This is the most. And I truly think that. Hey, I could get her. I could get Latin. Lat. I, I Latin have, sons. I get get her appearance down there. That's her district. And an appearance at a barber shop. Yeah, for the boys. For the boys, okay, they'll pop on that. Don't think that, that Craig and fucking Ob won't wouldn't wouldn't be fucking cool as that. I gotta be honest with you. I think it's pretty. Uh, I think I handled it brilliantly. I, I like the way she's pounding the pavement, doing the now calls that herself. I'm raising two little girls of my own, they're growing up with fewer rights than I did, and as they grow up, they deserve to have the freedom to make their own health care decisions and have autonomy over their bodies to decide what they can and cannot do with it. Well, with maybe a- I don't like her all of her message, but I mean, I don't like on Without know. government overreach telling them what they can do. Well, you're for women and having their bodies. my opponent... I have, absolutely. One of the major things that I have a problem with with regards to the Republican Party is I hate their stance on abortion. Like, I, that fucking really makes me mad. Well, like, it really makes me, like, Republicans, Eileen, okay, I'm all for having guns. I don't want to put any, you know, you know, but I, but you know what? I'm also, like, I could understand where this assault rifle thing, maybe we should kind of maybe look at that a little bit. Right. But, but that's a slippery slope. But I'll tell you what I'm mad as fuck about, and that is that the Republicans that have gotten, that have locked down abortion so much, there is a happy media that I think everybody could agree upon 16 to 20 weeks ish in that period and I could live with that but to the, the way Florida's locked it down to six and Louisiana's zero and in Indiana you can get raped by your fucking brother and you can still kind of have the kid yeah that's bullshit they have lost so many people like me I, I mean I'm way more Republican than I am Democrat but the Republicans have really lost me on this abortion shit. I think even if a woman, like, I think even if a woman is like, if her life's in danger, if something's going on with the pregnancy, like, and in some we, states you can't do anything about right, it. Right. Well, I was thinking if, if if it was past a certain point in Florida, like, I don't think you, you couldn't do it here. Yeah, it's fucking ridiculous. So I mean, it's fucking ridiculous. It's like somebody needs to take the Republican Party and say, "Listen, motherfuckers, you guys got the Democrats on the ropes right now. Sleepy Joe's fucking that sleeping, <laughs> but you motherfuckers have got to change your evangelical bullshit." On abortion, I will. T- Americans don't want that. I'll tell you what I talked to when I talked to Brent the other day when he was here doing his work for you, and we were talking about politics. I don't know why we were talking about the fucking Saints and if they need a wide receiver, and then we got into politics. And he was telling me because I was like, you know, Trump's going to get elected, and he's like, no, he's like. 
people are way more focused on abortion than they are on the border situation. Now, I don't know if that's true or not, but I'm listening to Brent. He's a smart guy. So he goes, they're trying to get you to make you think that everybody's paying attention and, and to this border thing. The it's Repu- like abortion is still a huge issue. But the Republicans are stupid fucks. They're so stupid is that they can have the best of both worlds. All they got to do is lighten up on abortion. Don't lock it down as much. Open it up more. You can still have some rules in it. Yeah. And then you got to, listen, the border crisis is a fucking slam dunk for the Republicans. All they got to say is, we've really got to put a fucking time out on this shit and come up with a better solution. I mean, we Boom, scotch that, tape the fence. will be done in 15 exactly. minutes. Exactly. <laughs> and then so all the Republicans got to do is be like, listen, you know what, guys? In the states that have had referendums with regards to say, listen, I know Republic, we have a Republican governor and he wants to lock it down to zero, but we're going to give it to, we're going to put it on a vote. I think Ohio, Kansas, Iowa, there's been like four or five different states that says, you know what? We're not going to let the government or the or the Congress or the Senate, we're going to give it to the people. And, and all four of these conservative Republican governor-led states overwhelmingly, like 70 to 30, voted to keep abortion le- legal. Now, those are the people talking. Those Midwestern, you know, salt-of-the-earth Republicans, they want their guns. You know, they don't want to, they want to fucking lock the border down. Yeah. But they want the ability... To for a woman to have a certain respectable time to make a decision on a child. There are some markers. There are some very, very health health markers that are very detrimental as to whether this child's going to be normal or not that don't start rearing their ugly head until weeks 12, 13, and 14. I mean, or even a little later, Bubba. Like 16. Once, well, I mean, once they start doing anatomy scans and all that stuff, I mean, I know they do certain tests there, but yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a process. I so. would, I, listen, I would feel, listen, I'm, I am the Republican that says clear to the third trimester. Like, that's probably a little aggressive in the Republican way. But I'm at least, at least 20 weeks. Right. Give, give me 20 weeks. That's not the third si- trimester. Close, but it's not. And I think every major ugly marker that could potentially be a bad thing for your baby and potentially the mother's health has reared its ugly head by then, for the most part. If you if you cruise past twenty weeks and you're still we're gay man, we're good. Baby looks good, everything's good. I think you're I think I think the bun in the oven is cooking up up nice. Can I tell you, Bubba, for the most part, I feel like I feel like most everybody respects that. They understand that there's a lot of situations. But I feel like there's maybe maybe it's a stronger minority of things that it's a bunch of teen moms who get pregnant who want to just get rid of their fucking kid because it'll not. affect their, it'll affect their streaming. Dan and, I, Dan and Romina, he spoke about it. He, I'm not saying anything out of turn. Dan and Romina had a baby between the two kids, between Sophia and Dan, little Danny, and they had a baby, and it went clear till I think. 15 weeks and at 15 weeks something major came up like down syndrome like like cleft yeah. i think it had a cleft a cleft um palate no, yeah cleft palate down and that was and it, it took until week 16 to get that marker and dan and, and, and romina was like listen we're not we don't that's not the kind of child we want to you know and that and that and that child was going to have to have you know, right, care yeah. for the rest of their life. Yes, and it's they, like, do, are we responsible to to bring this child into this world? Uh, right, you know, possibly suffer. I mean, look, those are. I mean, I don't I can't even imagine. You know, having to have that conversation. And but they did, and they and they and they got an abortion, and they both they both and they had the ability at that time to get one at that time. Yeah. Now Florida's locked it down to what six weeks? I don't I nine mean, weeks. I think if Dan needed to do it now, I think he'd have to go to Carolina. I think so. I think he'd. I don't think he'd be able to get it done here. I, I think uh, that's 16, what 15 I. 15 or know, 16. The Republicans are so fucked up. They could absolutely assure a Trump victory if they just said, we got abortion all wrong, man. We got it wrong. On the states that we've put it up for referendum, it's, it's overwhelmingly passed, and we're not going to dabble in. Women's right to make a to choose what they do to their body. Now we're going to put a time period on it, and it's going to be way more aggressive than what most hardcore conservatives want. But boom, twenty weeks. 
I'm that gonna... would change so many people. Is it, a, is it up to the states, though? Because I know, like, mm-hmm. Roe v. Wade got overturned. Does that mean that it was up to the states? See, to the, president re- the president really doesn't have much to say about it because it is on the state level now. Well, now I'm wondering. So that, that, that means that's why you got to get people like Whitney Fox and pe- Congress people in there fighting for you locally because these are the people that make the decisions. Well, it's like, I don't know who the fuck our next governor is going to be, but I'm Oh, I don't either. We know DeSantis was, you know, is, has has strong thoughts on you know abortion. You know, I think I think Charlie could fucking. I think Charlie could do it. Charlie Chris? Yeah, he already did it. I, yeah, he's but he, tried so, Bubba. He's tried so. Is, many. He, is he like a three time loser it's, now? It's yeah. I mean, yeah. he's. I mean, he's what? I mean, he's like but George, you, but George Foreman coming back for another fight. But you don't see the Democratic Party grooming anybody I, as much. Right? I don't I, look. I don't know about politics. I definitely don't know about local politics. But no, I, I haven't heard of anybody. You There's would think no, you would but, think somebody would pop up now and start kind of chirping DeSantis and well, all this shit for flaming I'll tell you out. One thing. On a, what I thought was a crank call, Whitney Fox chirped up. Who is a and I'm gonna, I, and I'm going to go completely. Again, I'm I'm voting for. You going to put a sign in your front yard at first? I'll put a sign right in the fucking right out here. Yeah, you want to take All her right around the farm? Extremist. I would take her around the farm. Anna Paulina Luna. She is for a national abortion ban without exception of rape, incest, or the life of the mother. Yeah, that's what. Now hold on, that right there, Anna. Paul, Anna Luna Polina, whatever the the bitch that fucking won. She's trying to send us to Canada. She 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 has a zero rape. That's let, let, let me let me let me just play this again. A national abortion ban without exception of rape, incest, or the life of the mother. How the fuck can you you can have a six week ban all you want, but when you've been when that when that child was conceived through incest through rape. Or the mom could potentially die. All rules were out the window. I thought everybody wanted the government out of their business. I do. But now that we, the government's in our she business. She is for and, and supports shutting down the government at the expense of our constituents. And she's an election denialist. She is not representative of the people in this district. And we've seen a lot of excitement about our campaign. In the first week of our launch, we raised a... That might be good for me because I'd be like, hey, everybody's like, oh, blah, 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 you're fucking suck, suck, RD, MAGA, dick sucker. I'd be like, fuck you, bitch. For my, I'm, I'm voting Democrat and supporting the Democrat for my for my local Congress. I think it's okay to have an issue on abortion. I don't think we went too deep into... you know. But what any, I'm saying is yeah. I think diversifying a little bit, maybe, maybe sucking a little D over here, uh, like as a Democrat, would be good for us. You know what you are? What? You're a little purple bitch over there. Hundred thousand. We've received the endorsement of. Hi, I'm Bubba Love Sponge, and I'm a purple bitch when it comes to the congressional race. It's a 13th district. We got Red Previous Dan, purple Mayor, bitch, Rick. and uh, Blue Boy. Here we go. Christman, Largo City Commissioner Jamie Robinson, Debbie McCarcel Powell, who's running for Senate against Rick Scott. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I'm going to be able to get you, Grady. Grady's pretty R. Grady's pretty red. <laughs> Everybody was red that you offered her, Bubba. I know. I, and that's just the beginning. We've m- got more coming. So a lot of excitement and momentum. People are excited to Dude, see. Dude, she could be the new leader. Lauren Bobart. Like, for real. Lauren, Bar- Lauren Bobart's having a fall off. That- if we put glasses on her, to work <laughs> we, could, we, might, we, could, aisle, we could be making some noise. To get things done. And you know what? Oddly enough, we could, have, we could be, we could, we you, know, we're, we're, you know, we're always ostracized as the bad guys. We fu- But we could be her break. We could be her break. The, oh. you know, that phone call could have been a life-changing phone call for her. Well, I think if she comes on the show, has she had a good appearance? I know, look, yeah. a lot of the people lean, you know, right here. But if anybody is in, you know, Pinellas or whatever, and they, they like what she says, they want to throw her a vote, then let's yeah. do it. Listen, not only am I do I think that she stands for some pretty cool stuff, I probably don't agree with her on some stuff, but I absolutely despise who's in there now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And to better the day-to-day lives and of we need her in our pocket. Residents. And I strongly urge anyone who is listening and hearing our message that believes in it and wants that proper pragmatic governance to please visit. Whitney Fox got a great name, too. You know what we need to do? What? We need to get her a ring and invite her to BARP next year. Yeah, we do. It. Well, it might be too late, though, for... WhitneyFoxForCongress.com and make Especially it... Especially if she wins. If she wins. No, if she wins, it's going to be great. She'll owe it all to so you. That we can get our message heard. Whitney Fox for... Con- we gotta have to talk about this on. You know, we gotta get out of here. It's just been too late. They sent you that story like three days ago. It's a good one though. We'll talk about it tomorrow. Oh, well, definitely. I mean, I mean, she's. We, a, I, I got. I, I probably need. I probably need you or Mach to probably pull pull the phone call so we can play it on the air tomorrow.
Oh, we have the press conference. That's that's her talking about it. No, no, oh, you no, mean no, no. Oh, oh, on the show. Oh, it's she called the podcast. I thought you were talking about the LSU story that you had pulled up in no, front. No, okay, no, sorry. No. <laughs> I mean, for tomorrow's show, yeah. let's have Whitney calling the podcast. All right, cool. He is our sexy boy. He's not your boy, boy. Direct deposits. He's making profits. He's picking pockets when his daughter's around.